Well, good afternoon, and I really believe that uh, our message to the audience is that in cell therapy, especially in mesenchymal-like cell therapy, the process is a product. The source is very important, as we have heard before, but the combination of the source and the process define the product in the end of the day. Uh, what we believe is that uh, even though you, have, you can have different cell types as a source material, by manufacturing changes, you can change the change properties, and I will try to prove it today. Okay, so we're a public company in uh, NASDAQ and in Tel Aviv. I think it's important to mention that we have uh, published the outcome of two phase one, two clinical studies, which are all, all in all about 50 patients with clinical results, which is astonishing to our opinion. Uh, we are using placenta cells only, combining them with our unique 3D manufacturing processes we believe that we generated something unique by that combination, and we'll try to show you later how, for one cell source, we can have different products. On top of that, we are active in a variety of clinical studies, and we are, I believe, the only company in the world as of today that conduct clinical studies in Europe, US, Australia, Korea, and Israel, and shortly, hopefully, to be in Japan, too. We have about 165 employees, and we are, we are aiming to be the leader in that space. We are public. Market cap is about 200 million, uh, 51 million at the end of September, and the net burn rate is about $22 million, so we have a few years of operation. So we start with the placenta. We collect the cells after birth, mainly after C or only after C-section, because we have to have the mother to sign a consent letter that she donated cells, and then Two months after birth, we have the product ready to go. One thing that we discovered in our phase one studies is that the way you prepare the cells before injection is crucial to define the quality of the study. So we developed a dedicated towing device, so we ensure that the cells are prepared properly before injection. And then they injected, we can argue a lot what is the mechanism of action, they injected into the muscle or IV and then generate a therapeutic effect that I will try to describe shortly. We have five clinical programs in place. Two of them have been, have been uh, out licensed to partners. So we are covering today a few spaces. The first one is the cardiovascular space. The second one is orthopedic. The third one is pulmonary. And the most ambitious one is the treatment of severe preeclampsia, which we are still in the preclinical phase, but we hope to enter into the study shortly. So the, the two out license deal we have are with United Therapeutics from US. United Therapeutics is the leading provider of drug for pulmonary hypertension. And together, we want to develop the next generation of pulmonary hypertension treatment <coughs> with the idea that PLXL will be injected, IV in that case, and will help the patient to develop new blood vessels in the lung in order to reduce the pulmonary hypertension. Uh, they announced recently some outcome of the study in Australia, and we're waiting to get more data later this year. The second one is with Cha Biotech out of Korea. In that case, we, license, we out-license them the use of our cell for Korea only, targeting the cardiovascular space, and they are conducting a clinical study in Korea as a part of uh, our multinational study. And we have a cooperation with the NIH, uh, regarding the acute radiation syndrome in which we are developing together an approach in which placenta cells will be injected IM intramuscular following irradiation uh, catastrophe or a nuclear uh, bomb or something like that. So I think that the main issue for the investors here is a question below. And can the cell therapy become the next generation of biological product, or more specifically, can one of us, one of the presenters, or one of the other companies become the cell gen, arm gen, gen and tech of the world? And I will try to convince you in the next 10 minutes that probably we can be the candidate of that, or one of the candidates. So the main reason to claim that cell therapy can make a change is to demonstrate significant clinical outcome. Otherwise, it's not important, because if we claim that cell therapy is great without any strong clinical evidence, then we are wasting your time and our time and patient time. So the first evidence is has been done in a clinical study conducted at the Charité in Berlin. Uh, cells have been injected into the muscle following hip replacement operation. And the goal was to demonstrate 
improvement in muscle force, muscle volume, and other parameters. And what you can see here is that we treated two groups of patients. The light blue represents the 150 million dose, the low dose. <coughs> the dark blue represents the 300 million cells, and the green the placebo. And after six months, we have seen significant improvement in the muscle force as measured in a torque machine. And the p-value was 0.0067, even though we had only 20 patients in the study. Another interesting <coughs> phenomenon that I've been asked before, whether high dose is doing better or worse than the low dose. We believe that uh, if we claim that cells should interact with the patient body, we injected in that case the cells IM. So when we injected too many cells into the spot, then the interaction was more with cell, between cell to cell instead of cell uh, to patient. <coughs> and because of that, we have seen that there is a better effect in the lower dose. A second study we conducted is the CLI. You can see patient has entered into the study. And then what we claim that our cells secrete a cocktail of protein related, associated to anti-inflammatory reaction and angiogenesis. And you can see the outcome after three months. So all those legs have been, uh, a few of them have been completely recovered. The only endpoint that is considered as acceptable by the, ag by the agencies is amputation-free survival. And you can see here the result. In that case, we had no placebo control, so we compared the orange line to the blue line. The blue line is the placebo of Sanofi Avanti study in CLI, which uh, had been conducted a few years ago. So what I would like to emphasize today is to, on our statement that in uh, MSCs, MSCs like, the process is a product. I think that the first generation of uh, allogeneic mesenchymal stem cells approach have been presented here. In the beginning, 10 years ago, people have been talking about stemness, about mechanism of replacement, and people have been looking for multipotent capa uh, cells or, multi or stemness capabilities with understanding that cells should engraft and replace something. We question that dogma, and I, I'm happy that today most of uh, my colleagues in the allogeneic space claim that the mechanism of action is paracrine endocrine effect which I think it's important to understand the future. Because if you are looking for paracrine endocrine effect, then the cells that we look for are completely different cells, uh, which have been looked under the assumption that we look for multipotency. And because of that, we believe that the placenta cells are unique in, in that, that capability. Not only that, we proved that when we grow cells in 3D, actually we are trying to change them or modify them to the target we want. And what you see here, is a gene array sequencing following 3D culturing. So you see that a part of the gene has been elevated, a part uh, downregulated, and by coincidence, or not by coincidence, the genes that are associated with angiogenesis went up, others went down. The, the ones that are not marked here with names are done uh, in, in purpose because we filed a patent that protects the 3D culturing by identifying the genes that are associated with the 3D culturing. So we believe today that the, next, the second generation is the 3D culturing, and the third generation of cells is cells that can be cultured in a variety of conditions, and we can change their properties by priming them or preconditioning them. You can see here the gene sequence of the PLX rod. After we prime them with uh, some inflammatory cytokine, we can see that about 600 genes have been changed and we do documented that after crop preservation, the cells keep the properties. So we use the placenta as a source. The main reason for that is the unique immunological characteristics of those cells. And today, we define our product in the following diagram. So we have two subpopulations of cells. The PLX PAD on the left represents cells which are at least 90% maternal cells. On the right, you can see the PLX RAD which represent majority of fetal cells. And then when we apply our condition, different condition, uh, conditioning, uh, 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 different media conditioning, we can ge generate variety of products which are presented later on. So we start with the placenta, we generate intermediate cell stock, and then in 3D culturing, we change those cells and generate the final product that we claimed before. Why it's so important to grow cells in 3D? because we are more, much more efficient. The bioreactor gives us about 70 times more efficient process compared to the 2D classical culturing, and we believe that it's key for manufacturing. 
In order to enable it, we had to develop a variety of products. One of them is a harvesting machine. Uh, we work in cooperation with KSAP in order to do continuous centrifugation. And in the end of the day, what you see here is our manufacturing suite, which enabled to manufacture 150 doses of PLXL. A dose is 300 million cells. And you see that what you see here is actually a, a pharma-like manufacturing room and not lab room that in other facilities. We are located in Haifa in Israel. And we, can, we are proud that the Intel, Google, Microsoft, Philips are around us, or we are neighbor to them. And what is more important to mention here is that the FDA, the EMA, uh, the Korean, and the Israel authorities approved our CMC. Not only that, we managed to demonstrate that we can take two different donors and by using our manufacturing technology to control the properties of the cell. And in the end of the, cell, in the, end of the manufacturing process, we confirm the two different donors give identical products. And it's something that, as, as I said, have been confirmed by the agencies. The next generation of culturing, we believe, is the plurisphere, something that we announced this week. The idea here is that we have tried to develop something new into that space in which cells will grow in a semi-3D environment on dedicated plastic uh, uh, spheres. Cells are grown in a bioreactor. And the advantage of that is that we can suggest to the market a fully uh, scalable system you can start in the lab with a half a liter bioreactor and then move into larger scale and to manufacturing. Well, you keep all the time the micro environment on the, uh, on the microsphere, which is very important to our opinion. And now in the last slide, I will try to, to explain why I claim that we, Floristem, have a chance to be one of the companies that are mentioned below. So the first one, one that claim that you want to lead, have to demonstrate significant clinical, clinical efficacy, and we have two studies that confirmed it. Second, one should work with many agencies in order to overcome the fear of the investment community that it's dangerous, that it's non-stable. The fact that we have been approved by five different agencies gives some confidence that what we do is probably right. A company should have more than one product. We have two of them as of today. We believe that in-house manufacturing is crucial because none of the companies that I mentioned before outsource manufacturing, and we think that manufacturing is key in controlling the properties of the cells. We have two out license deals, so somebody was ready to pay some money in order to get the right for our product. And we have a very strong IP. Last two, two days ago, yesterday, we announced new patent in Australia and New Zealand. And usually, I like to finish my presentation with this slide, because I strongly believe that the miracle of birth can bring therapeutics to many people. Thank you very much. Thank you.